How's it going guys? So in today's tutorial, we're going to be learning how to make a reptile kind of lizard skin totally procedurally. Now what you're about to see is actually taken right out of the procedural material course that I just released. So you'll be able to get a part of a free lesson from that making a whole lizard skin material. If procedural materials are something that's kind of confusing to you and you can't seem to grasp, this is a procedural material course for beginners and intermediate users. So check it out, link below. So with that being said, let's get into the tutorial. Let's go ahead and delete them. And what I want to do is show you a trick. Now, in this case, it makes it look like an organic lizard skin. You can do this with anything. And that is taking one pattern and then making the pattern smaller and mixing them together to make it look a little more natural. So let me demonstrate that. So let's get our color ramp and we're going to do kind of a green lizard skin. Just kind of have some fun with it. So we're going to get our Voronoi, Voronoi texture. Let's plug distance into the color ramp, control T, and we'll plug the object coordinate here, F1 to distance to edge. Now I neglected to mention something, and that is how to look at bump. So let's plug our bump in. And if I haven't mentioned this yet, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug the distance here. The way bumping works is you have these gradients. So notice how this gradient works. It's dark here, it's light here. So dark would be flat, light would be more extruded out. So the brighter the material, it's gonna be higher up. So we have this gradient and that thus correlates to lower here, higher here. That's kind of the rule of thumb. So if you're like, oh, I wanna add some bump to it. Well, does it have some darks and lights? Then it'll show some bump. That's kind of how that works. So I'm gonna bring the scale up. I'm gonna go ahead and get a nice green lizard skin. So what I want to do is get another Voronoi texture here. What I'm going to do is hold shift right click. So we just have one wire. So it's less complicated. So here's what I want to do. I'm going to mix, mix RGB and plug that there. And then we're going to get our Voronoi texture and plug it here. Now, what I want you to notice, which I think it's this one, yeah. Okay, so this Voronoi texture here, let's go ahead and plug in the, the, uh, the mapping. Let's make it really small. So if you look here, we have two patterns, a big one and a small one. Because the problem is if you're trying to make a lizard skin or even a leather, you're not gonna have, I believe the word is uniform. It's not all the sizing isn't gonna be uniform. Now we do have some random ones like here, but for the most part, they're all the same scale. And if you look at your own skin, you can see um, you know, there is a Vorno pattern in your skin, but there's gonna be various, <clears throat> various sizes that we're dealing with. So we wanna actually be able to mix more than one size here. I accidentally clicked that, we'll do mix. We wanna be able to mix them together so that we can reveal some small ones, some big ones to make it look natural and we're gonna use this mix RGB um, setup again. Like I mentioned, a lot of repetition, and that's because the same process done different rate, uh, ways for different reasons yields different results. So let's go ahead and get a noise texture. And then let's plug that here. I do need to get a color ramp, so I'm just gonna highlight these guys, hit G to move it back. Let's get our color ramp. And let's plug the factor to the color ramp. Okay, so here's how it's gonna work. Let's bring this noise texture like we always do just to kind of make it obvious. We're mixing these two together. What I wanna do is actually make this one a little smaller to make it reasonably close. It's already looking more natural. Look at that, it's already so much better looking. And then we can just kind of uh, get this detail up to 12 so there's a more natural gradient to one from one to the next. You can see that there, small, big, nice gradient there. So we can just kind of bring this out, play with this color ramp so to make it just subtle enough so it's not obvious we're using a color ramp to mix patterns, but that we're revealing pattern. There we go, look at that. We've now created more organic looking pattern. And then we'll go ahead and just distort it so I'm gonna hold down shift, left click, I mean right click, so that we can distort this pattern just like we always do. I like to just kind of repeat these things just so that it kind of burns it into your brain. 
Um, that's the way I like to teach. And that's also the way I like to learn. I, that's how I learned how to make materials, is a redoing process over and over again. Um, so I recommend doing that a lot in any educational stance. Um, so let's, we're doing that. Let's go ahead and get that detail up to 12. Okay, and then we'll bring this over. And we have now created a very natural looking lizard skin material. Let's go ahead and bring this guy over. Click that. So we made a new color, put it there. And look at that. Look how cool that is. We've made organic materials. We've made something really cool and natural looking. And that is how you do it. That's how you do that. You have bigger, smaller, more organic, more natural. How to make something really cool. Doesn't that look like something you'd see in like a dinosaur, or skin, anything, rocks too. This works as rocks, pavement, make that black and white, play with your colors there. Add some paint strips um, with like image textures if you want, all that stuff. That's more like advanced techniques, but you get the idea. This is really easy. Now when I say organic, I mean things in natural life, rocks, skin, dirt, all that. That's what I mean by organic. We've now created a very organic looking skin here with really fun techniques. My favorite one being this one where we're revealing bigger and smaller pieces. So you can actually play with that now. You can see that one moving there, see that one moving there. And if that's too obvious, you can play with your gradient. But that is how we create organic materials. The kind of idea using these shapes. These are the organic shapes that we have to deal with, to play with. There's some other ones I showed in the very first lesson. If you look at the, the rigid multifractal and the BFM, from BFM to original factory, we have those worm trails. Um, since I already showed you that, I'll just leave that for you to play with, but you can play with that as well. That is organic. There you go. Hope you guys like that. Let's move on to the next lesson.